But embracing sustainability actually offers uh, not just South Africa, but I think all the countries on the continent, a very credible pathway to, to inclusive growth. I mean, in McKinsey Global Institute, a recent study said, you know, this transition towards sustainability is perhaps the single largest capital reallocation event uh, in history. And I think therein lies the opportunity set, right? And, and, and I believe that, you know, the, we've got incredible potential as the continent to offer the goods, the services, and the products that are required by the decarbonizing world. The opportunity sets, as I see it, are almost in, in, in three parts. One is making the enablers of global decarbonization, so the supply of critical minerals, fuel cells, electric vehicles, etc. The second aspect is you know, to make green versions of black or gray products yeah, you, that are produced solely by, 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 by renewable energy. And I think the third and the final aspect is just exporting, I suppose, almost green know-how, whether it's in financial services or technologies and other innovations to the rest of the world. So whilst doubtless, kind of the pace at which we transition requires very careful planning and synchronization because a disorderly transition also carries many inherent risks and, and, and has the potential to even sharpen uh, social tensions. But I think you know, that shouldn't you know, almost blur our vision to also the opportunities on the upside. I think that um, sustainable financing and sustainable development is critical in terms of inclusive growth as we go ahead. I think there is a slight danger that we make this conversation relatively elitist, right, in, in the level that we speak at, you know, in, in terms of um, the, you know, how big are the deals that we do. But the real, I think, measure of success will be as we see how th the idea of sustainability and sustainable development actually truly embeds itself in communities. So I know this is going to sound really interesting from a, coming from a banker, but I, I really like to talk about um, passionate partnerships, right? Because I think, um, and, and, and collaborative, um, compassionate collaboration in terms of how we do it. I think what's really key is um, for the bigger institutions, wherever in the private sector, truly um, mm -hmm. facilitate and catalyze those conversations. It reached sort of the lowest levels of our communities, right? Because, you know, fancy um, climate stuff shouldn't be some elitist thing that we do. Um, and I think we should truly embed that um, into the way we're thinking and the way we're talking about things. When it comes to the framework, uh, it's critical uh, for large companies as well as lenders uh, to have uh, uh, predictability of the investments. And with predictability, it's uh, like an overview of an investment which lasts uh, at least uh, three or six years. Uh, in the past years, we have seen in Africa a lot of changes, a lot of changes of framework, uh, even improvement, but still uh, unpredictable improvement. Mm. So what we see now uh, in few important markets of Africa is the stabilization of those framework uh, toward the uh, electricity market that are evolving from uh, simple markets, uh, which we used to have in South Africa, like uh, participating to tender through IPPs, uh, to a real electricity market, which uh, real electricity market expand uh, the possibility of uh, the businesses into the different portion of the value chain, creating uh, margins, uh, cost uh, and opportunities for job creation as well as businesses and attraction of capital, as well as creating a kind of a mitigation of the risks embedded of having uh, the one single client option that used to be the situation in most of the African countries.